Harper, and you're going into a very stiff, stiff breeze here in this opening quarter. Tony Yelp, just a freshman out of Arlington, Wisconsin. As Dan McCartney telling us yesterday, singing the praises of this young man. Gary Reasons, Ron Phillip from Ames, and we are underway. A low side winding kick, and it'll bound into the end zone, and that's where Iowa will let it go, and they'll take over first and 10 from their own 20-yard line. The quarterback for Iowa, averaging almost 36 points a game and over 400 yards off us. Their quarterback is McCann. He'll play the first couple of series. Then we will see Brad Banks come in. Running backs and wide receivers, if you're Iowa State, you're going to have to contain, well, first of all, the line. Bruce Nelson anchors the line. And of the running backs and the wide receivers, Iowa State will have to contain number three, Khalil Hill, his senior year, having a tremendous senior season. I will end, starts out, two men in the backfield, man in motion is Oliver. Keep it on the ground, straight ahead running, it's Betts. Mark Timmons making the tackle, but not before Betts gets the first down through that Iowa State defense that's ranked 90th against the run. Lineups brought to you by Singular as we take a look at the uh, line for Iowa State. Jordan Karsten, third team, all Big 12, announced last night. in the linebackers, Matt Word, three-year starter, leads the team in tackles in the secondary. Timmons made the last tackle, small in stature, but he is a big hitter. First and ten for the Hawkeyes on their own 35-yard line. This time, Betts is going to be stacked up right at the line of scrimmage. Ron, you can see early on here from the first two plays of the ball game what we're going to see all day here from this Iowa Hawkeye club. They want to run the football. They want to get their big tail back. Liddell Betts in motion inside the tackles. Do a good job. First play on the ISO play, bring it up there to the Cyclone defense. Hey, if they're going to execute well today running the football, it's going to open the passing game for Kyle McCann. And Betts is the workhorse. He is one of the best in the conference. Last year, over 1,000 yards. Coming off a 171-yard performance last week versus Minnesota. Second and 10 for the Hawkeyes. McCann will put it up for the first time. Looks over the middle. Dumps it underneath. Pass is complete up to the 42-yard line. Khalil Hill on the reception. It doesn't look like a whole lot there on the reception, but what they did was they got a confidence play from your quarterback. Bring Khalil Hill across the field underneath the linebackers. Get him into the game as well. They'll talk to their offensive coordinator, Ken O'Keefe, and he said, hey, we want to get our offensive guys into the game. That's Liddell Betts and Khalil Hill. And, and uh, McCann has to throw the ball well, which he does on his first touch run. Well, Hill, 34 consecutive games. The senior out of Iowa City has had a reception. That's his career numbers. Impressive. Third down and three. McCann, five-step drop, looks over the middle, flush from the pocket, still looking. Pass complete up to the 49-yard line. Again, it is Khalil Hill. His second reception, we saw, I think, the resilience and the patience of Kyle McCann on that play. Well, the senior quarterback's been around the program a lot. He knows what to do. Good protection up front. Watch the offensive line, giving him good vision. Hey, he's just going to find his number one guy, Khalil Hill, who works away from the defenders underneath. They do a good job of getting the first down. Tyson Smith, a right defensive end, came up to make the stop. Kirk Ferris brought up in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. He's on the Iowa staff along with Dan McCartney when Hayden Fry was the head football coach. First and 10 from the 49-yard line. Opening possession for the Hawkeyes, and it's a good one. Go back to the bread and butter. It is Betts, the senior out of Blue Springs, Missouri. Jordan Carstens from that defensive tackle spot. Jams them up. You know, let's talk about that Iowa State defense. You know, Gary, last year they had some players like Reggie Haywood and Reed, and these guys were stout. But Dan McCartney lost his starting defensive line. He lost six defensive backs. He's had to retool, and defensive coordinator John Skildane, he couldn't be prouder the way these guys have really gelled this year. They really have. They've played a lot better as the season has progressed, and we saw Jordan Carson make a tackle there. He leads that defensive front up there. Their linebackers have played solid so far late in this, late in the season. Well, they've got to keep Iowa off schedule, but right now they are on schedule after picking up four on the first down play. Second and six. Betts again will try the left side. Bounces off one tackle inside the 45, down to about the 42-yard line. First hit came up from Justin Eilers, that weak side linebacker, the senior out of Boise, Idaho. Betts is a workhorse, though, Gary. Well, he's a guy that's going to run it in there time in and time out. Got good body control, good pounding ability in there. He's 225 pounds, a little bigger than what they we've got him listed there. And he runs into that defense, and he delivers the blow instead of the defenders knocking him back. 
Well, third down conversions have not been a problem for either team. Iowa's at 50% on the year. This time they're facing third and two. Iowa State with seven in the box. McCann looking in the flat, pumps one, has a go pattern, and he overthrows Oliver. McCann took a hit right after he let the ball go. Errol Clues was on the coverage, but that was pretty good defense by the Cyclones. It really was. They brought everybody in. They wanted to work a one-man route to the outside so they could get behind the defense. Good job that time by the Cyclone secondary just reacting on the throw and making a good play on the football. And there is Michael Wagner set to return the kick, standing at his own 10-yard line. Good snap off the side of his foot. Gets a great Iowa State bounce. Stopped at the 20-yard line for Bradley's punt. Didn't go very far. And Iowa State will have possession of the ball in their own 20. We have a full house in aim. We're ready. The fans are glad the rain has stopped because two hours ago we were drowning frogs here in Ames, Iowa. They take over first and 10 from their own 20-yard line. This Iowa State offense averaging just about 28 points a game. Having a big effort last week against Kansas. Haywood, the lone setback, will go with a one-back set throughout most of the game. Wallace puts it up in the flat, complete. First down, Iowa State inside over the 30, up to the 32-yard line. Let's take a look at the singular off lineups again, the Iowa State offense. And, of course, the quarterback, the X-Factor we have talked about, Seneca Wallace. Iowa's had problems with this type of quarterback because of his athletic ability. And the line is anchored by Marcel Howard. He is the best blocker. He is going to be on Aaron Campman for most of the day. Running backs and wide receivers look for Lane Daniels and the leading receiver to help open things up for the running of Ennis Haywood. Three wide receivers to the left as they go to a four wide receiver set. And they keep it on the ground. Haywood bangs his way over the 35, up to the 38-yard line. As we take a look at the Iowa defense, first of all, on that defensive line, the man that everybody talks about is Aaron Campman, former linebacker. He is by far the best defensive lineman on this team. We'll call his name out a lot today. Linebackers, solid core of linebackers. Roger Myers is the leader on this linebacking core. And in the secondary, much improved. Saff and Sanders are the best covers and the biggest hitters on the team. Pick up a five on the play, so Iowa State stays on schedule. Second and five, two wide receivers set to the left. Iowa with a five-man defensive line. Wallace will run the after. This is where he's dangerous. 40, up to the 43-yard line, shoved out of bounds, close to a penalty. He was well out of bounds when he was shoved out by Derek Pagel. Well, you see the athletic ability of the quarterback coming around the corner. Seneca Wallace, you see him here, just the down-the-line option. He's going to read to the outside. Hey, he's, he can turn it up here, but he decides to bring it to the corner, and he's got the speed to be able to do that. You see him hit out of bounds there by Pagel. They, they did not have a flag on it. Questionable call. The line judge, yeah. the field judge, is right there who makes the call. Now, the first 12 plays of Iowa State's offense is scripted. The first 15 plays, Iowa State's history tells us that they're not afraid to throw a gadget play in there. But what they want to do is create balance, run the football and throw the football. And they've had success with everything they've done so far, Ron. And now the tight end, Mike Banks, runs over to the right side. Daniels is wide to the right. And it's Haywood, nothing doing, leans forward, may have gotten back to the line of scrimmage. And Aaron Campman, the senior out of Kelsey, Iowa, with the stop. Campman what? detracts from the backside, does a good job coming through there. If you're not going to block him on the backside, he's going to slide down the, the line and make play after play on Haywood, stop him back in the backfield. Kyle Knock is checked into the game at tight end. What a great story, though, for Campman. Comes from a town of 80 people. Two streets that run north-south, two streets that run east-west, and he has a stoplight. Just an all-American young man. Danielson now wide to the right on second down and nine. Campbell in motion. They run the reverse to Campbell. Looking for a block. Haywood tries to seal it off. Campbell inside the 50. They'll mark it right at the 50-yard line. Pagel again coming up. The junior out of Plainfield, Iowa, to make the stop. Now we talked about the gadget plays, Gary, the first 15, and we saw our first one. Well, when you take your tight end and you make him a blocker, you're going to watch Banks come around and watch his serviceable block. It's not going to be an overpowering block, but number 31, Banks, stays on it. That's the contact that you need to get your receiver around the corner. And then Campbell has the speed to make a good play here for the Cyclones. 
Third down and three. On third down, Iowa State is at 47%. Both teams very effective on third down. Three wide receivers to the left. Three-step drop. Wallace fires it. First down complete to Danielson. Finally dragged down at the 40. Danielson with his 44th catch of the year. He is the big play receiver for this Iowa State team. D.J. Johnson on the cover. Well, a quick step drop here, three set step for the quarterback Wallace to get back and throw the ball on time. And if you're going to block the defensive lineman camp at number 54 here on the bottom of your screen, go ahead and use your offensive tackle and give Seneca Walls a chance to throw the football. The best pass rusher they have is going to be Campman from the outside, but if you handle him that way, Seneca Walls can have vision and see, see the lanes down the field. You know, I was talking to Steve Loney, the offensive quarter, so you're going to run away from Campman? He said, no, we're going to go right at him at times. Not afraid. First and 10 from the Iowa 40 for the Cyclones. Play action. Wallace looking deep. Has a man pass. Complete to, Din to Campbell. Down to the one-yard line. The senior out of Santa Fe Springs, California, his 27th catch of the year. But what a pass by Wallace, Gary. The Senator Wallace running to his left. That's the unique thing about it. He's going to come here and throws across his body. Hey, watch the strength of his arm and the delivery. He just is right there where the receiver has to catch the football. Campbell's come up with a couple of good grabs here for the Cyclone. Well, Iowa State very effective in the red zone. 29 touchdowns and 44 attempts. They're 35 of 44 overall. First and goal from the one. High formation. First man through. The fullback. Still no signal. Joe Woodley cannot find Peter. Boy, when you're first and goal on the one with Wallace, boy, the options available carry are just like endless. Well, they've been so productive on third down and fourth down. It's a very similar situation in the goal line area. When you need just a short yard or two, your quarterback, who is the X factor, can run the football, throw the football, plus you got a big banging tailback and Haywood back there. You got a lot of choices to go with. Well, they got two tight ends. Banks and Kyle Knock have checked into the ball game. Haywood, the tailback. Lane Danielson will come to the near side. Woodley's the fullback. Haywood looking for a seam. Oh, he's hit and dumped at the three-yard line. Great penetration by Mike Dolezal, first of all, the senior out of Minnesota. Well, when you toss it on the goal line, you want to win the corner, and they did not win it because Iowa took over the corner, and they won it. And watch Dolezal, number 39, just take the back side here. We're looking at Wallace, but... The play fake held our cameraman, but Mike Dolezal does a nice job of playing behind the ball, carrying running inside and making a good play in the backfield. A two-yard loss, which brings up a key third down here in the goal line. They started on about the one-yard line. They are back to the three, and it's third down and goal. Whitaver and Danielson on the near side. Haywood, the lone setback. Look out. Wallace over the middle. Touchdown! State. Lane Danielson. His fourth touchdown reception of the year, and for Wallace, that is his 11th throw. Well, the quarterback just takes what the defense gives him. It's going to be a read out. You're going to see Danielson come in and work back out to the outside. An easy throw and an easy grab. A lot of space to work with. You bring your secondary defender inside that Smith, and you can't keep to stay with him because he's got too much ground to cover. So important in rivalry great games to get on the scoreboard first, keep the crowd in the football game. That was a concern for Iowa. Yelk with the extra point. And he is 37 of 38 on the year. Dan McCarney likes it, and the Iowa State fans like also. Danielson with a touchdown reception, and the Cyclones have the early lead. Tom Thulin and Iowa State the first to strike just at the 7.09 mark of the opening quarter. 7-0 is our score. That took them uh, just about 3.53 to go, 80 yards. They did it in 10 plays. But the key play, of course, was uh, Seneca Wallace to Danielson. That got him down to the one-yard line. Iowa State has won three straight, matches its longest streak ever over Iowa. Of course, the teams didn't play between 1935 and 1976. But they are playing now. The Little Hill and C.J. Jones back for the Hawks. High 
side-winding kick with the win, and that'll go out of the end zone, and Iowa will take over on their own 20. Let's go back to that key play. The key, the way Wallace threw across his body. It really is. He throw, rolls to his left and throws across his body. Got the play fake inside. It's play action. Everything is working to his left. And once his delivery to the football, he gets up there to Campbell, number 19, who gets behind Bob Sanders. Very, very good throw. Gets him down to the one-yard line. Three plays later, it's a touchdown for the Cyclones. Well, Dan McCarney knew that this uh, Iowa offense can be very potent, and he is concerned about the fact they do have two quarterbacks. It's Khalil Hill and Chris Oliver. Now the wide receivers to the left. They keep it on the ground. Pads are popping. Betts gets stood up. Jeremy Lloyd, the junior out of Pittsburgh, Texas, and Tyler Junior College coming up from that outside linebacker spot for this Iowa State defense. You talk about pads popping. You're going to hear a lot of that today. This is a oh, rivalry. Yeah. This is a game. Hey, it was supposed to be played in the middle of the year. The events of our country it was postponed it to the end of the season. Hey, this game means something. Both teams are playing to improve their spots and their bowl possibilities for the mm -hmm. end of the year. These guys are playing all out today. And Nothing less than Jeremy Lloyd. He makes a big hit on that play. Well, every bowl scout is here. The Alamo Bowl, Gallery Furniture, the Independence Bowl is here. Insight.com. The possibilities for both teams are endless. That's left side. Finds a little seam and crosses the 30 up to the 33-yard line. And again, Jeremy Lloyd on the stop. Betts has only averaged in the three previous games against Iowa State about 62 yards against this Cyclone team. Well, what he's got now, he's got a better offensive line, Ron. The offensive line has improved. he got some serviceable guys in there at guard because they've had some injuries, but right now they're getting pad on pad and creating some holes. And you see the shake and bake that Betts has, enough ability to elude guys, and he's got great vision. That's the thing about it that makes him a key running back. Well, you mentioned that offensive line. When Kirk Ferentz came to Iowa, he did not have an offensive line, to be honest with you. They have done a great job building it up. They'll stay with the ground game, straight ahead, nothing doing. Matt Ward is right there to meet Liddell Betts. Ward, the junior out of Miami, Florida. Well, Ward is a man in the middle. He makes a lot of plays with his defense. He's a leading tackler. He's a very athletic guy. He's a good, good he runs the football mm -hmm. real well. That's what I like about him and fills the hole pretty well also. Hey, but it's not easy tackling Liddell Betts. He's 5'11", 220 pounds. He's got enough shake and bake, as I talked about earlier, to elude guys, so it's hard to get a square hit on him. Second down and 10 for the Hawkeyes. Now the state sneaking up. McCann is going to check the play. They keep it on the ground, dancing around again. The workhorse, Liddell Betts, and Jordan Karstens comes up to make the stop. You know, Gary, when you talk about Liddell Betts and having seen him play the last three years, there's a guy that has never complained, continues to work hard, is the team leader. Every yard, you look at the yardage this young man has gotten, they're hard yards. They, they really have been. His whole career, he hasn't had the greatest offensive line to work with in front of him, but he hasn't complained a bit, and he comes out there every day and practices to improve. And Liddell Betts, he's out of the game now, but he is the heart and soul of that offensive running game. Third down and four, and Iowa will go to the three wide receiver set. Best in the Big Ten on third down. McCann, very little pressure. Now he sees it, dumps it off. First down, Iowa. Complete to C.J. Jones. And he gets into Iowa State territory. Boy, you talk about McCann being resilient. He is very poised back there. Well, Kyle McCann has good protection up front here. He watches the field. He sees three, four guys, and he finds C.J. Jones coming on a smash route from the other side of the field to get the first down for the for the Hawkeyes. But that's a good job by the quarterback. A couple of plays ago, Ron, he did something that we will not see when Banks is in the game. He audible at the line of scrimmage. Mm -hmm. when, C when Brad Banks is in the football game, they're going to go with what's called the Kyle McCann. The senior has been around the program. He can check and put him into a better play. Well, Iowa had a pretty good drive going the opening series. Only to have it stalled. Betts back in. This time he's going to be stacked up right at the 45, or grieving, I should say. Grieving is stacked up at the 45-yard line. Maybe a pickup of three. Jeremy Lloyd coming up to make the stop. He's the big playmaker and the very vocal leader of this defense. And we talked with John Sklodany about how do you approach this offense defensively. They're deported here at Iowa State. We talked about whether or not he's going to blitz. He might use some situational blitzes against Kyle McCampbell when you've got another quarterback in there who has more athletic ability running around. He can't do that. So right now, the Cyclones are just trying to find the best way to stop this mm -hmm. Iowa offense. 
Well, they haven't even gone to the uh, wide receivers per se, and Iowa has a distinct height advantage in that position. Now they're going to try it. Here comes the blitz. McCann is going to be sacked. Back at the 42-yard line by Matt Ward, his second sack of the year, and only the 15th given up by that Hawkeye offensive line. Well, this is one that Kyle McCann, when he sees the tape of this game, he should think I should throw this football. Matt Ward's number seven, going to come inside, but he's got Khalil Hill on an easy little slim post route wide open. He should have tossed it down there. Take a look. You're going to see Hill come into the screen on the right side. He is wide open. The linebackers cannot even extend to get to him. Good play that time, though, by the Cyclones and making a big play in the back from the sack with your linebacker, Matt Ward. Well, they're not taking the crowd out of the game, that's for sure. Five defensive backs in now for Iowa State. Bill and Oliver wide to the left for Iowa. McCann slips a little bit. Has to dump it underneath. Penalty flag is thrown. Pass is complete to Betts. He's stacked up at the 50, well short of the first down. Penalty flag thrown in the Iowa backfield would make one believe that it is a holding call. Well, John Sladani has decided to put some pressure on the quarterback as we see the holding call. You're going to have to pressure Kyle McCann because he does have a good arm, an accurate arm. And he's a big intellect guy back there at the quarterback spot. He makes the right choice, the right decision. Only has 10 interceptions on the year, Ron, and that, that's pretty good for oh, yeah. a guy who's played a lot of football. Well, let's see what happens. Here. Probably Iowa State will just find this. Holding play. offense. Holding the climb. Fourth down. Well, it'll still bring up a fourth down. Well, when you pressure the quarterback, number 92, Jordan Carson's in the middle here. He has 24 quarterback hurries on the season. Just kind of get a grab in there, and he might spin around. He needs to put pressure on the quarterback. He's done the best for the Cyclone defense this year. Wagner is back. Bradley to kick it away, and again off the side of his foot. Wagner's telling everybody to get away. And again, another bad punt by Iowa. You know, when you talk about tight games, it comes down to turnovers and special teams, and that might be the case today. 2.27 left in the first. The Cyclones have the advantage over the Hawkeyes. That was not the case just about two and a half hours ago. This is what it looked like about 9, 9.30 this morning. I mean, it was coming down, folks. It was cold. But about an hour ago, the, crowd, the clouds broke, and it became a beautiful day. Gary Reasons round through and with you. Iowa State leading 7-0. Going back to work offensively, and there is Mike Banks, the tight end, and he may be hurt. We've got some pushing and shoving on the sidelines. Fred Barr getting into it. Yeah, he went out hard on the sideline. I'm telling you, I'm impressed with Mike Banks. Two plays here early in this football game. One on the first drive that Iowa State has the football, and making a key block as well. They're going to utilize that tight end of this offense. Steve Lundy, their offense quarter, so they're going to get him. Good ball. First foul. Lays right out of bounds. 15 yards. And that's an easy 15 yards for the Cyclones to get down the field. But back to my point, Steve Loney, their offensive coordinator, said, hey, we're going to get our guys to football. Mike Banks, the senior, 18 catches on the year, doing a good job for him. And, hey, take a look here out of bounds and got the late hit. Mm, boy. You know, not, you, not a real flagrant hit, but he's probably has lost his balance. But Banks on the ground, right. unprotected, you got to throw the flag. Boy, in, in a game like this tight, you get you got to keep your composure. Uh, Jamal Montgomery has checked into the lineup for Iowa State. First down and 10. Own 45-yard line. Wallace from the shotgun. He's going to keep it. Looking in the flat. Has a man. is complete to Whitaver. Inside the 50 down to the 47-yard line. Jack Whitaver, the sophomore out of Grinnell, Iowa. The walk-on. Well, when you can call plays, when you can roll your quarterback right or left. And Seneca Wallace, he's not left-handed, but he throws well rolling to his left. Just throwing on time, and you got the zone defense with the Hawkeyes back there, and hey, it's just easy picking for Seneca Wallace right now. Well, you talk about this Iowa State offense, how it has improved each of the last four years. 1997, they were 83rd in the NCAA overall. Now they're up to 23. And a lot of it has to do with the play of Sage Rosenfels, who's now with the Washington Redskins, and this man, Seneca Wallace. We have some jumping and dancing around. And of course, the penalty flags will be thrown. The way game offense. You know, I thought it was funny, Gary, talking to uh, Dan McCartney yesterday, and he said, you know, Seneca Wallace at the beginning of the year said, Coach, I've never played in a rain <laughs> game. He, you know, he's on Sacramento, California, where it's always beautiful. They go to the Missouri game this year. All of a sudden, it's, you know, it's uh, the drowning kind of weather. 
and he fared quite well. And he's thinking, hey, when, when they play up here in October, November, <laughs> it could, could be snow on the ground. He's, he he's hasn't lucky. had to see any of that. He's been lucky so far this year. This old Sacramento B, he's uh, lucky it's not 40 degrees and snowing right now. Able to try the right side. He'll be stacked up right at the 50-yard line. Maybe a gain of about one on the play, and things are getting a little testy now. Once again, Fred Barr is in the middle of it, along with Jerry Montgomery for Iowa. A love rivalry game. You know, we have Oklahoma, Oklahoma State today. Arizona, Arizona State was yesterday. These rivalry games, this is what football is all about. And it's good that this one is at the end of the year. We talked about it earlier. It normally would have been in the middle of the season. A lot of people say, hey, why don't you have this Iowa-Iowa State Classic at the end of the season? It just doesn't fit with what they do in the Pac-10, excuse me, the Big Ten, and also the Big 12. Well, the Big Ten won't allow them to do it. But for one year, we are. Wallace will throw it up for grabs. A lot of pushing and shoving. No penalty flag is thrown. Incomplete. Intended for Craig Campbell. D.J. Johnson, the junior out of Naperville, Illinois, was step for step with him. Well, D.J. has to play well out there. He's out on the island. He's got Campbell man-to-man. -man. Seneca Wallace, this is one ball that just sails on him. He does have the wind at his back. It's aiding the football. And you see it turn there. I'll tell you, when a ball turns like that in midair, you know that the wind is pushing it. And that's what happens there. That's the, uh, they're saying the pass was uh, not catchable. Tony Yelp, low snap. Nice high spirally kick. Khalil Hill will just let it bounce at the one. And it'll go into the end zone. Well, Iowa has not had all that great field position to start the game, and they've been affected by bad punting on their effort. Well, when you punt the football with the wind into the wind, it's going to be tough. They were around midfield both times punting. Kyle McCann to play a couple of series, and we'd see Brad Banks, and that's who is in the lineup right now. Banks, the junior out of Bell Glades, Florida, and Hines Community College. He's more of a runner. Now Hill and Oliver wide to the left. Banks is going to throw it. Rifles the pass. Hill makes the reception. Bobbles it, but did catch it. Maybe picked up a yard on the play. Adam Runk, the senior out of Skullwater, Minnesota, lowered the boom. And there's Brad Banks. If you talked about it, maybe a better runner. He really is a better runner than Kyle McCann, as you see him on the bootleg pass there. But interesting, though, when they talk to us about him, his arm is just as strong, but it's not better. Well, we have completed the first 15 minutes of play. Iowa, Iowa State is exactly the way we thought it would be. Betts has done his job, but Iowa State has the lead, 7-0 after one. Along with Gary Reasons, I'm Ron Thillen. Iowa with the football. Brad Banks is the quarterback. Second down and seven. As we begin quarter number two, keep it on the ground. Big hole over that right side, and Liddell Betts, again, blowing through that defensive line of Iowa State. Matt Ward has to make the game-saving tackle. Well, what you do when another quarterback comes in the football game, you give it to your big guy up front, Liddell Betts, spread your offense out. You're going to have Brad Banks in there, and you're going to throw the football down the field. You're thinking defensively, but uh, you get your running back, Liddell Betts, moving north and south. It's a real potent attack. Well, here's our Sitco trivia question. Iowa State, two straight answers. First and 10 from the 36. Banks, second pass of the afternoon. Rifles the pass, complete right at the first down marker. And Khalil Hill is having another great afternoon with reception. Uh, three catches already for Khalil, doing a good job of pushing the defenders back and a confidence throw for Brad Banks. Coming back to your quarterback and letting him get set and throw the football down the field. Brad Banks is a real versatile player, uh, Ron. He's a real strong arm thrower. He's also very versatile with his feet. He's the X factor, kind of like they use Seneca Wallace mm -hmm. with the Cyclones. Eric Jensen, the big tight end, is checked into the lineup. Dallas Clark is out. First and 10 from the 47. C.J. Jones to the near side for the Hawkeyes. Four to snap it. Second man through. A little bit of running room in Iowa State Territory. Again, at his best, Anthony Forrest, the redshirt freshman, coming up from that free safety spot out of Fort Worth, Texas, has to bring down the big Liddell Betts. Well, watch your left guard here. Andy Leitha doing a good job of creating space here for Betts. You're just going to be the ISO play. When you can move the defensive lineman that far around and hit your fullback with the lead block, it's going to give your offensive tailback a chance to make positive yardage. He just gets right in behind those big guys, and that's where you want to operate offensively. Well, Betts already with 62 yards in this football game second down and three 
straight ahead running again. It is Aaron Grevin, the sophomore from right here in Ames, Iowa. Justin Eilers coming up from that linebacker spot to make the stop. And Aaron Grevin's no, no, no slouch himself. No. 33 carries this year. He's averaging over six yards a carry, 6.3 yards, and he's the changeup. And you take a look at Liddell Betts, who's on the sideline and taking pretty good contact in there. Hey, this is going to be a physical football game, and yeah. these big tailbacks are running in there. They're going to get popped. Yeah, they're looking at that right shoulder as we look at the numbers. Not bad. How about 6.3 yards of carry this year? First and 10 from the Iowa State 40. Little play action. Banks, plenty of time, flushed again. Looking, looking, and he is going to be sacked. The second sack of the afternoon by Iowa State. Kevin Durante, his second sack of the season. Well, that's just persistent by Durante. Hey, great coverage that time in the secondary by the Cyclones. Take away everything the quarterback wants to throw to. Brad Banks, hey, he's going to look at one, two, three, four receivers. Nobody's there. The play action holds the linebackers. No, we're going to go back and cover. So Banks says, hey, I'm going to let my big guys up front here do something for me, but they can't hold Deron down. He makes a great sack. This is an effort sack number 99. Take a look at him here. He's just going to continue to the quarterback. A loss of nine on the play. Second and 19 is Jeremy Allen, the lone setback. He has the football right side. Running room. Gets back to the original line of scrimmage, plus three. A.T. Austin, the junior out of Carpenter Springs, Florida, making the stop. So Jeremy Allen, who's had only 42 carries for the season coming into today, kind looks of good on this one. Yeah, it really does. A bruising fullback, 240 pounder. Take a look at him here on the outside. He just kind of runs over the defender. That's Austin the Teeth. Hey, that's a pretty good run there. Yeah, I'll tell you who's the most happy guy about that play is Ken O'Keefe for offensive yeah. coordinator. Now it's a better chance at third and seven to operate. And you can see Iowa State already with a couple of sacks. Third down and seven. Crowd extremely loud. The blitz. Look out. Banks throwing into nobody in particular, and it is incomplete, but he was running for his life. Everybody was coming in. Tyson Smith, the sophomore from Des Moines, led the chase. Well, the Cyclones go with what I call zero coverage. They've got nobody back deep. It's all man-to-man, -man and they're going to bring the house. Uh, they cannot account for everybody on defense, so Banks has to be the guy to throw it away. And Luckily, he finds he's able to throw it in the area of a receiver. Otherwise, that would have been grounded. Michael Wagner, deep to receive. Well, Michael Wagner, deep to receive. Well, they're going to try the field goal. They're going to spot it at the 45 yard line. It's a 55 yarder into the wind for Nate Cady. I saw him warming up, Ron, with the wind at his back. He's more than capable of making this kick. Eight of 10 this year, and he slips and falls and goes down. And the kick is no good. He never got that left foot down, and the sophomore. From Coralville, Iowa, no good, but it really wasn't his fault. We've got a timeout, 11.20 left in quarter number two. A battle with Iowa and Iowa State. Cyclones have the advantage. Jerry Reasons, I'm Ron Thulin. Welcome to Ames, Iowa. Two tight ends with Banks and Kyle Knox. First and 10 from their own 38-yard line is where Iowa State will begin play here in quarter number two. Wallace with the option. Haywood trailing, has the pitch. Fumbles the football, but he was already out of bounds. Haywood has fumbled only once in his entire career, and that was recovered by one of his teammates. But you look at the fumbles for Iowa State, it is so impressive. It's, it's unbelievable. Really, only two fumbles the entire season that they've lost. Actually, their tailbacks have only have not lost a fumble in the last 55 games. Let's take a look at the trivia answer. Well, here's the question. Two straight winning seasons. Who was the coach in 77, 78? And the answer is Earl Bruce. Iowa State, 73 to 78. Great trivia question. Who fouled Earl Bruce here? It is Donnie Duncan now with the big 12 tackle. Pick up a three on the play. Haywood, left side, and he is hit hard as he gets back to the line of scrimmage. Dennis Haywood out of Dallas Carter High School. Fifth all-time Iowa State rushing the football. His career average over five yards a carry. Only Troy Davis has a better average. But he's so powerfully built at 5'11", 220. Definitely a north-south runner, though. No doubt about it. He's got the power. He's got the ability to run, run long as well. Big 12 player of the week a week ago with four touchdowns. That brings up a third down and six situation 
Wallace will go to the shotgun. Lance Young to the near side for Iowa State. Looks right, looks over the middle, pass is complete. First down, Iowa State. Danielson is stacked up, but he did get the first. Bob Sanders from that strong safety spot, the sophomore out of Erie, Pennsylvania, making the stop. And not before Daniels made the reception, his second of the game. You know, when we talked to Dan McCarney, I asked him about Seneca Wallace, their quarterback, and how was it that a guy who's as talented as he is at the quarterback position hasn't been able to been, dis been discovered? He went to Sac City Junior College for a couple of years and really didn't have a lot of people recruiting him. Take a look at Lane Danielson's numbers on the season. Pro a productive receiver for him, but Seneca Wallace is a guy who didn't have a lot of lookers, but they took him here at with open arms at Iowa State, and I think Dan McCarney's been more than pleased. I'd say so. In New Mexico State, they the only one that really went after him hard. A lot of people did after is uh, Haywood is hog-tied big time by D.J. Johnson. But, you know, that, that's a case of a lot of quarterbacks, though. You know, they're unknown commodities, and nobody's quite sure about them, but, but boy, Wallace has made his definite impression of the Big 12 newcomer of the year offensively. Well, I tell you, when he comes in here to this football team, they're a running football team, so what that does, it takes the pressure off of the quarterback, mm -hmm. and Dan McCarney wants to run the football. But Seneca Wallace, he throws the ball well, he runs the ball outside. Hey, he is excellent around the edge. Well, he's going to call a timeout with 8.51 left in quarter number two. Not sure what he saw in the Iowa defense. We'll step aside. Iowa State leads by seven. On this Saturday after Thanksgiving, so nothing. Uh, Iowa State leading. Wallace looks over the middle. Pass is complete down to the 25-yard line. Mike Banks, the senior out of Ogden, Iowa. Well, Gary, you talked about him. You were impressed. He doesn't have great hands, but he's got solid hands. Well, Mike Banks is your tight end. He's going to work into the middle of the field. He's left open, and Seneca Wallace, after the play fake, just threads it through there. You're going to have zone coverage. The safeties are separated, and he gets inside of the linebacker. Seneca Wallace has a great lane to throw the football, and hey, Mike Banks has made a couple of nice plays today. That's his third reception of the ball game, and Iowa State again on the move offensively. First and 10 from the Iowa 25-yard line. And they're doing it without much of a running game. Here's Haywood. Stacked up. You know, you look at the numbers, it is very telling the success that Ennis Haywood has had. In the wins, he averages just about 149 yards on the ground, and the losses just 50. Prior to that run, he had only 13 yards on seven carries. Is that a good omen for Iowa State, or do they have to start finding a way to open it up on the ground? Well, over time, it's going to open up, open it up. If you throw the ball down the field, the defense is going to relax and have to take care of of the receivers going down the field, and that will open it up for Haywood. This offense works by combination, running the football, throwing the football, Dan McCarney wants balance. Three wide receivers set on second and seven. Iowa yet to blitz in this game, but here they come now with five. Wallace steps away from it, falls. Good effort by that Iowa defense, Colin Cole, coming in from that defensive end spot. The big junior out of Plantation, Florida. That'll be his third sack of the year. It's tough today. to blitz an athletic quarterback, but they do here on the outside. You see the pressure and then the, the Cyclone, excuse me, the Hawkeyes coming underneath and making a play from the defensive lineman. But Seneca Wallace, watch him say he misses the first guy, but Cole yeah. and company are there to, to finish him off. The Hawkeyes have to pick their spots and they blitz against him because when you do and he breaks free, mm -hmm. hey, it can, he could go all the way right. to the house. First sack of the afternoon for the Hawkeyes. Third down and 14 now for Iowa State. Wallace with time into the flat. Pass is complete to Campbell, and he is going to be stacked up. They're going to mark it at about the 25-yard line, which will be 10 yards short of the first down. When I talked to Norm Parker, the defense player from Iowa, I asked him, I said, give me, give me a definition of your defense. And he said, with no, no, no remorse, he said, hey, we're a lunch bucket defense. We're not a fast defense, and we have to play good, sound defensive techniques. And Johnson does there on the outside, who makes a good play, and brings up a fourth down now for the Cyclones. Now, Tony Yelk, who does both the punting and the field goal kicking chores, only 7 of 16 on the year. They're going to mark this at the 32-yard line. It'll be a 42-yarder. Casey Baldwin is the holder. Matt boxes his snapper. Into the win, and that will go nowhere quickly. Well, that was a little Hoyt Wilhelm on that kick. Nice little knuckleball, but it was into a very stiff win. 6.04 left in the half. It's still Iowa State 7, Iowa nothing. A little help. Hurt, he oh, goes, no, oh, no. Look at this. 
That's a little Stone Cold Steve Austin oh, thing. Oh, working. Hey, that's the penalty for missing the tackle. Hurt he couldn't <laughs> make the tackle on the Hawk there, so. Uh, Kyle McCann is back into the lineup at quarterback, and from now on, Kirk Ferentz said they usually play it by ear on who's going to be calling the signals. Iowa State moving up to the line of scrimmage. They keep it on the ground with Betts, left side. Betts has had great success this afternoon as Adam Runk brings him down already over 60 yards, and that will probably put him close to 70 yards on the day. Well, good job that time on the offensive line for uh, Iowa moving it. Go ahead and stretch, stretch the field and use your big running back, spread him out to the outside and just push, push, push. And that's what they did that time. And Betts, recipient of some good blocking up there. Well, Josh Gildaney told us, the defensive coordinator of Iowa State, that he wanted to turn it into a throwing game. That hadn't been the case. Well, you want to go tr try to turn into a one-dimensional offense coming at you, make McCann throw the football. Second down and three. Betts this time met right at the line of scrimmage and drops. Matt Word, who is just doing yeoman's effort today, coming from that middle linebacker spot, Matt, whose cousin Perry Ward, who's a running back in the Kansas City Chiefs organization, his brother Mark, plays for Butch Davis, defensive end at the Cleveland Browns. So when linebackers play downhill, that means coming towards the line of scrimmage. That's what you like to see from a defensive player, and Matt Ward does a nice job of getting in there behind the blockers and making a nice tackle in the backfield. Now, come on, Gary. You were a linebacker with the Giants. You got all the Super Bowl jewelry. You got to love it when you see a guy play like that. Hey, when a guy plays heads up and plays down and makes plays in the backfield, hey, you know he's reading his keys well. Jeremy Allen, the lone setback on second and three. A little hitch pattern is complete. Nothing doing. C.J. Jones paid for it as soon as he caught it. Mark Timmons came up. Matt Ward was in on it. So if you want to destroy a screen pass, this is what you do from the defense here from the Cyclone. Put pressure on the quarterback. Take away everything here. And Timmons, number 18, nicely makes a, a good tackle, clean tackle after he's getting bounced around. C.J. Jones had nowhere to go. Ten men on the line of scrimmage for Iowa State. Bradley's had some problems kicking it. Much better this time. Wagner at his 29-yard line running room. Look out. Up to about the 40-yard line, a return of 10. Mike goes all on the stop. And we've got a little extracurricular, as they say. I wouldn't expect anything less in this football game. No. These two teams playing with a lot of emotion, a lot at stake here for both of them. Now, once again, good field position for Iowa State. They've had it all day. They've converted one time, but Iowa has done a pretty good job just kind of bending on defense and haven't given up any more big plays to the Zuckland. You know, when, when Seneca Wallace goes to the line of scrimmage, he has two plays because it's so complicated. The coaches of Iowa State don't want him to get paralysis of analysis. That's a good, that's a good way to say it. That's a great way of saying it. <laughs> I mean, they don't want him to freeze up there. Campbell in motion. Dennis Haywood, second leading rusher in the Big 12, has had no place to go all afternoon as Derek Pickens, the senior out of Houston, Texas, and Kilgore Junior College making the stop. You keep going to it, though, Gary. You keep pounding Haywood and just pounding him, pounding him, hoping one time it'll break well you do that you pound it in there you pound it in there and hey then you sneak Seneca Wallace around the corner once or twice and that's what really opens up the offense for the Cyclones you're going to get some yardage inside with your big tailback but your quarterback also can run the ball and he's shown us also that he can throw the ball very well today well that's a comparison between the two backs we talked about at the top of the show four yard a carry difference between Betts and Haywood now mm -hmm. Wagner and Haywood both in the backfield Wallace whoa what a move and then he slips. Penalty flag is thrown way back on the other side of the field. There was uh, some pushing and shoving going on, and we're not sure what's going to be called, but uh, well, it's a chop block, block below the knees. Whoa, what a move by Wallace on wet turf, though. I tell you, if this was on Astro turf and it was a dry oh, field, I mean, he might make some guy embarrass some defensive players with his quickness. He's going to make you miss. He's going to make you look really bad. You could tear something. <laughs> yeah, I tell you, Iowa has played one guy this year, Randall L., who's a similar quarterback. 15 yards, end of the run, second down. So they know the type of quarterback that he is and his ability. Take a look here. It's going to be the down the line option. You've got a weird play here. He just goes inside, back outside. Golly, I tell you, that's quick feet. If he has good footing underneath him, he's going to make a big play for the Cyclones. Well, Mike Dole was just frozen in his tracks, and he did a great job of filling the hole. Then just that quickness of Seneca Wallace spun him around. Well, the 15-yard penalty 
Brings up a second down and 22. Ball all the way back at the 27-yard line. And Kirk Ferentz's defense has a chance now to at least hold Iowa State and get some good field position as we go inside of three minutes here in quarter number two. Wallace does a nice job getting the snap, and he's in trouble. Penalty flags all over the place. Wallace might as well just take a seat and scampers out of bounds. And again, great pressure put on by that Iowa defensive line. Aaron Campman's the one who was in hot pursuit. Well, two things, good pressure by the offensive, by the defensive line and defensive front, but the coverage is good as well. We're gonna have a holding here in the, the backfield for the Cyclones. Yeah, you gotta take a kind of kind of take down there, and Seneca Wallace is going out. You see the, the back, the umpire throwing the football, uh, the flag, and also the referee as well. Third penalty against Iowa State. Neither team penalized all that much. They both average about six penalties a, a game. Close to being another late hit by Iowa. They got a long way to go for the first down. They're gonna cross midfield. Gonna be at the 49-yard line of Iowa. So it's bringing up a third forever situation here. But you know, you got to be careful here, Gary. you got 243. You don't want to do anything stupid. That's going to give Iowa great field position or give them the ball back on their side of, or your side of the football field. I think you're going to be punting into the wind, so Iowa, yeah. they're able to stop them here to get opportunity for good field position. Third and 27 after the penalty was declined. Wallace this time has some protection. Now he's got running room. This is when he's dangerous. Haywood misses the block, and that causes Wallace to go down. Nice play by Grant Steen from that linebacker spot. That was a good play by Steen on the outside. Didn't take the shake and bake. He just stood there and made the tackle on Seneca Wallace. And Iowa calls timeout here. It's a second of late in the first second quarter here. Time to save the time on the clock. And so they, they are able to punt the ball and punt it into the wind and hopefully get a good return on it. Well, a couple of things. First of all, it was a heads up by Iowa to call timeout immediately and stop it at 231. Besides a great play from Steve. Yeah, it was. Coming up on our Sonic Halftime Report, we'll talk about the Big 12 Players of the Week. You're watching one of them this afternoon. How about yesterday? My goodness, that Colorado-Nebraska game. Long day for Frank Solich and company. We'll go back and take a look at that. And the bowl picture, it's fuzzy, folks, is the best way to put it. You know, you talk to the Iowa people today and and uh, their staff, and I said, you know, what's your possibilities? Uh, seven or eight. Yeah, se <laughs> seven or eight. Well, now Khalil Hill, who is one of the most dangerous punt returners in the country, averaging better than 12 yards a return. He is standing on his own 33-yard line. Low snap. This is returnable. Oh, my. He'll let it go, and then he touched it. And it may be Iowa State's ball, and it is. Oh, my. Ellis Hobbs, a true freshman from DeSoto, Texas, but Khalil Hill made an incredible mistake. Well, Khalil Hill back there. He's going to try to field this football. The ball bounces. I don't think it hits his foot. Watch it there. I don't think it did. But Khalil said that he knows that he touches it with his right hand. And hey, the Cyclones do a good job of picking it up. Take another look at it. I don't know. That looked like real it, it's, it's real, real close. close. Hey, but he knows because he knows he's going for yeah. it. So he puts his hand up, which is what actually triggers the Cyclones to fall on the football. What did we talk about, Gary? Special teams, turnovers. How about a turnover on a special team? Boy, a senior shouldn't make that kind of mistake. But it's great field position for Iowa State with plenty of time here in the second. Haywood dancing around. He's on his feet. Leans forward down to the 27-yard line. Pickup of about nine on the play. Just pound it inside, get eight or nine yards with the big tail back in there, Haywood. A nice play to set this drive up here, move it down inside. Now you've got a good, good call, good opportunity to make a make a unique call here on second and short. You've got the X factor at the quarterback position. Or you can go back to Beth or throw one down mm -hmm. the field and try to get a score here on a big play. Two wide receivers set for Iowa State. Second and two from the 28. They keep it on the ground. Haywood. Flash forward, down inside the 25, down to the 21-yard line. D.J. Johnson on the stop, and it's a first down for the Cyclones inside of 145 in a second. You know, we talked about the team that led after the first quarter has won 10 of the last 11. It gets better. The team that leads at halftime in this game has won 11 straight. Not very Ennis Haywood type. Day. First and 10 from the 22. Wallace 
Look in pattern, complete inside the 10, down to the six yard line. Frank Campbell, his third reception of the afternoon. And Iowa State is knocking on the door again. A good read by Wallace in the quarterback spot. It's a five step quick drop. He's gonna have a slant pass from the outside to Craig Campbell. He's gonna come here and work to the inside and the quarterback's gonna set and throw very easily to him. Nice throw, nice catch, gets inside the 10 yard line and the Cyclones are knocking on the door. First and goal from the seven. Two tight ends for Iowa State. 65 seconds left in the half. Haywood, left side, looks for Pater. Touchdown, Iowa State. Fourteenth rushing touchdown of the year for Ennis Haywood. And thanks to the Khalil Hill air on the punt, Iowa State capitalized. Watch Marcel Howard, number 75, win the corner there. And Ennis Haywood reads it in the back door and does a nice job of finding the hole for the touchdown. And then we have, I think, an excessive celebration. Well, oh, it's fortunate-like conduct. Well, it's unfortunate-like conduct, so the extra point... And this is crucial. Oh, it really is. This is huge. The 35-yard extra point into a stiff win. Now they're going to spot it, as you mentioned, at the 25. 35-yard extra point. And you can see the win, and that's the open end of the stadium. Good snap. Good hole. And it is good. 57 seconds left in the half. The Cyclones by two touchdowns. From about the eight, it's Hill. Still on his feet, trying to make good, and he gets up to the 15 and is swarmed under. Good kickoff coverage by Iowa State, and usually, and that's something we asked to Dan McCartney and Kirk Ferris that Iowa usually had the better hand this whole year as far as special teams. Well, when you kick off into the wind, you can do what they did there and you get the ball up real high. It hangs up and Khalil Hill comes up to about his 15 yard and only got three yards on that return. Good coverage by the Cyclones. Now the 36 yard four play drive took just under a minute and a half following that Iowa fumble on the punt and that has given Iowa State the 14 nothing lead, but <laughs> there's a lot of football left. That's Slips and falls, and he's going to be buried back at the 15-yard line. Let's see if Iowa State will call a timeout. Both have two timeouts left. Well, nothing going here. I'll tell you, the Cyclone defense is playing inspired football. When you have your defensive lineman getting into the backfield and making plays like that, it's going to be a tough day for the, for the Iowa offense. Nice job up front of time by Willie Judd, number 95, breaking through untouched. Well, there's only a two-second difference between the game and the snap clock. So uh, one more play for all practical purposes here in the half. And the Iowa State faithful, 50,000 people have jammed into a stadium at seats 43. They've been loving this game. Now McCann's going to call a timeout with three seconds left. Interesting. You think you'd just take a knee with your back with your back to the wall, go ahead and just snap it and take a knee. Well, that's the safe thing. You just go ahead and take the, take the time out. Just going to drop back and put the knee down anyway, but it would be a five-yard penalty. Anything closer to your end zone, you don't want to have happen. Well, Iowa comes in with a record of 4-4 four and four for Kirk Ferentz. Dan McCartney's team also 4-4 four four in the Big, uh, Big Ten. They've won two straight. Bowl eligible for the first time since 1997. The difference between this year and last year for Iowa after they had only two players with three years experience much more this year you can see the uh, series between these two iowa leads 14 to 4 here at iowa state iowa's last win though was at 97. that was uh, in iowa city and one thing that dan mccarney has going for a football team also they have 11 straight non-conference yeah. wins this would be a 12th if they were able to accomplish that today this football team has played very well for him over the last couple of seasons 15 out of the last 22 games, they have pulled victories out of those. and A lot, a lot of reason to be impressed here with what he's done with this program. And Absolutely. I know a lot of people here at this program are saying, hey, we're glad that Dan McCartney is here. He's done it the right way with a great deal of integrity and hard work. And now they'll take the knee, and that'll be the end of the first half. Once again, the team that has led at halftime between these two, 
has won 11 straight. Dan McCartney's team has the 14-0 lead at the end of intermission. We come back, we'll have the Sonic Halftime Report. Stay with us from Ames, Iowa. Where the Longhorns hooked it up with the Aggies we'll in front of the largest the crowd ever to see a game in the state of Texas. Block punt, Texas takes advantage well, of it. Special teams are always key in big games, and that's a big game rivalry down there. And get the first on the board for the Longhorns, and then Cedric Benson powers his way into the end zone for the second score. I'll tell you, Mac Brown and his bunch, they're hoping to move up in the BCS standings run. But here was the shocker in Boulder, Colorado, Nebraska and Colorado. Big day for this combination, Bobby Passavetto and Dan Graham. Well, that, those two have hooked up a lot. You see the big play here on this pass. When you can throw the ball against this Nebraska defense and run the ball the way they did, hey, it's amazing they put up as much yardage and as much points as they did. The Nebraska defense really, really didn't do anything all day against them to stop them. But they did answer a couple of knocks on the door that was and making it close. But when you hang up 62 points on, on the Nebraska defense, that says something. And this young man had a heck of a day. Chris Bounds, six touchdowns on the day for the Buffalo. And Gary Barnett has thrown a monkey wrench into the BCS. And he is in the Big 12 championship game. And if Oklahoma wins later on this afternoon, they will be playing Colorado. If not, it'll be Texas. And yesterday, 62-36 the final. Texas over A&M, 21-7. Game was much closer than that. Illinois, great. That is the statue of Jack Trice, who the stadium is named after, the first black player at Iowa State who was injured. He passed away in 1923. It seats 43,000. We have over 50,000 on hand today for this interstate rivalry between Iowa and Iowa State. Iowa State with this crowd will average over 45,000 this year. And here's some of the highlights from the opening quarter. Seneca Wallace showing his ability to throw the ball across his body, lays it up nicely to Craig Campbell to set up the first score of the football game. For Seneca Wallace here throwing the ball on timing. Third play, bingo. Nice, easy route catch. Iowa trying to get some things done, but I tell you, their linebacker, Matt Ward, does a good job bringing it back in the backfield and making a long day for him. Can't run the football against his defense either. His words, company, do a good job of stopping that. That's 67 yards. They did have one opportunity to score, but the slip on the field goal attempt by Kading, and that was about it. Uh, just more defense here by the Cyclones. Word doing a good job in the middle. This Cyclone defense has played inspired football in the first half. Dennis Haywood, the final touchdown of the half, breaks over the left side inside of two minutes, and Dan McCartney, who's always enthusiastic. Well, when you take a turnover off the special teams and turn in the, the points on the board, that's what happened there to end the second quarter. And I'm sure he was very pleased with his offensive performance. Well, the weather could be changing. The wind has kicked up. The clouds have come in, and there's still plenty of football left. We'll be back to Iowa after this. Boy, is Iowa. Quarter number three, and we are underway. A driving kick that may split the uprights. Iowa State will begin first and 10 from their own 20 yard line. Iowa State, fourth winning season since 1980, only their second since 1989. Dennis Haywood, part of the group of uh, young men that Dan McCartney has brought him to Iowa State. You know, in the past, Iowa State has always had good kids but they haven't had the kids that have the ability to play winning Big 12 football. Dan has done that, but the next step is beating the Kansas States, the Colorados, and Nebraskas for this team. Seneca Wallace in the first half on fire, 10 of 11, 128 yards, the touchdown throw. He has command of the football in the, the first half. Four wide receivers, they drop it, in, drop it into the flat, and it's complete again to Lane Danielson who has been uh, just the uh, workhorse today. That's his fourth reception of the afternoon for Danielson out of Dyke, Iowa. Leads the team in receptions, fifth in the Big 12 in yards per game. Well, defensively for the Hawkeyes, they need to step up. And Aaron Campman, number 54, is the leader on that defense up front. And he needs to make some plays for them to succeed. Seneca Wallace in this offensive group for the Cyclones been able to move the ball consistently on them. Well, into the win, Iowa State now again looking to throw. Three wide receivers to the right on second and five. Wallace, quarterback draw. He called his own number. 
gets a block, and he will have the first down as he crosses the 30 up to the 31-yard line. That's a solid call by Steve Loney. Well, when you take and run a draw play, and you want to get one guy out of the picture, you want to get him up and out of the field. Marcel Howard does a nice job just to club to free his quarterback inside, give him a lane to run with. Seneca Wallace gets up the field the first and the first half of the Cyclones. I love Marcel Howard's nickname. They call him Cell Block. <laughs> and that time, he blocked on Aaron Campman. 75 is a big body out there, 6'6", 320 pounds. Marcel Howard, a former walk-on. First down and 10, own 31-yard line for the Cyclones. Haywood, left side, has a little bit of opening, and again on first down, he blasts through. It'll pick up at least seven on the play. That keeps you on schedule, and that opens it up for Seneca Wallace. Well, when you want to go at somebody, go right at the number one guy. That's Aaron Campman. Watch here. Marshall Howard, hey, a little fake inside, but get him holding. Yeah, he probably got a hold on him there. Yeah, he's got the pads, doesn't he? He's got the meat hooks on the pads. Yeah, he's got him he inside. You know, you don't get, get those big meat hooks yeah. out there. Marshall Howard, you might have got away with one there, bud, but doing a good job on Campman so far today. You like how Campman shrugged the shoulder pads back? I mean, he had to readjust them. Daniel sit on the near side, second down and three. Haywood again, straight ahead, and he will be close to yet another first down. Bob Sanders coming up from that strong safety spot. So a nice mixture for this Iowa State offense that's very balanced. And again, the uh, matchup. Well, the matchup is there. Aaron Campman hasn't been able to get away from this defense. His offensive line blocking him right there. They blocked him with a tight end, Mike Banks, number 31. The big senior, 250-pounder himself. So Aaron Campman really hasn't made a bit of factor in his football game for the Hawkeye defense. Now the sun is broken through as they're going to measure. Talk about a balanced offense. That's this Iowa State offense. 192 yards rushing, 199 throwing the football. Third down and a scope. That's a football term, Gary, scope. Well, I think they're probably going to go for here. Dan McCarney, hey, we want to get some momentum as the sun comes out. Let's go ahead and make it while the sun is shining, as they say. Dan McCarney's going to go for here on a fourth and short situation. Their offensive line is doing a good job. And That'll be third down. That'll be short. third down. I thought it was going to be a fourth down. That's right. They had the first down earlier. Oh, Joe Woodley, the big fullback, comes in from Des Moines, plus a couple of tight ends. And their success rate on third down has been outstanding this year, Ron. Craig Campbell wide to the left. I formation. We haven't seen that a whole lot today. 57% completions on third down uh, conversions. That's, just a, that's an excellent job. By the oh, offense. my. And then Marcel Howard jumps on that left side. So here we're singing his praises. And he gets happy feet. Uh, that happens sometimes. <laughs> yeah, it does. Start talking about a big guy and doing well. But just excited to make a play, watching the left side of the screen, number 75. The defense moved in front of him, but they didn't get in the neutral zone. And, and big Howard just kind of fell out of his stance. And he's going to make a little bit of a decision here, a different decision for their offensive corner, Steve Loney, to call a play for his offense. And Whoa. Seneca Wallace now has to make, a, make something happen here with a third medium. Well, you have a third down and maybe eight inches. Now you go to third and five. Huge difference. Now there's some confusion among the officials. There's one saying start the clock, another saying stop the clock. I think a rip. Now one of the officials went right over to Dan McCarney on the sideline to give him some information. They're coming back to Kirk Ferenc from this side. Yeah, one of the officials may be hurt, the left knee. So we're going to take a quick break. We'll come back. Hopefully we'll update his condition. Iowa State leads 14-0. Referee is Bill Lamont. Your watch on the left side of your screen after that last play. He's going to come in here a little bit of limp in his step there. Watch his left leg. He's just kind of got a little hitch in his giddy up and trying to work it out of him out there. He's got his kinks out a little bit. He's going to try to go on it. We watch him run around out there and hopefully he's going to continue. Maybe one of those old football injuries, a little That's cartilage <laughs> in the knee or something, lock up on him. Bill's the gamer himself. Going to continue well, he is. his referee position. It came out and looked at him, and in case you're wondering what would happen if he'd have to leave, it's predetermined by the crew who takes over as referee. Third down and five, 12.40 to play in the third quarter. Iowa State leading 14-0. Wallace looks, passes complete right at the first down marker to Mike Banks. And the spot, if they put it where they're saying, it'll be short by just about a football leg. Excellent play by Derek Pagel, playing from the strong safety spot up on Mike Banks. Holds him just short. It's going to look like here, Ron, on the mark. 
what do you do now, Gary? I mean, uh, you're, you're moving the football. You're having great success. Do you go for it? Well, I think they might go for it here on the left side of your screen. You're going to see the coverage. Good job by Pagel, number 25, on the inside, taking away the, the first down from Banks. The what a Senate, job by Senate Wallace. Throwing that yeah. just a little bit longer. If he'd had enough time to throw it, as we see, it's about six inches short. But Banks wants to go for it, the big senior tight end. And Dan McCarney, I think this might be a chance where he would, but it looks like they're bringing no, the punt team on the field. Well, you're kicking into the wind, though. That's yeah, that's what, the thing. You can make, you know, make the first down and go, but, you know, Smarley with a 14-point lead, go ahead and play it close to the vest and kick the football yeah. away. That's why he gets paid the big bucks, Garrett. Yeah, it's easy to talk about it. <laughs> I know. I don't have to do it. Tony Yell, if you can see the average on Tony, but he's punting into an incredibly stiff wind, 20 to 30 miles an hour at Khalil Hill. Standing at his 25. And Khalil Hill made a big mistake at the, begin at the end of the first half to give the ball back to the Cyclones. And he does a nice job, hangs it up in the air, and Hill's just going to have to let it bounce. And Dan McCartney looks like a genius. Goes inside the 15, down to the 13-yard line, and for Yelk, that was his 20 or his uh, 14th inside the 20. He did his job. Really has. Yelk has done a good job for Dan McCartney this year, punting the football and kicking, doing a good job in special teams. When you can improve in your special teams area outside of offense and defense, hey, it says a lot for your football team. 45 yards on the kick for the nation's leading freshman kicker. And Iowa, again, with bad field position. You can see the clouds that are hanging over the field, but from where the weather's coming, it's still pretty clear. First and 10, Iowa has it on their own 14-yard line. McCann will put it up into the flat. The red jerseys converge on Liddell Betts. That's with only his 12th reception of the year. Bo Coleman coming up from that right defensive end, who's the motor guy on this defense, big 55, the junior out of San Diego, California. A good coverage that time by the Cyclones downfield. McCann bring, brings it all the way down to his check down receiver. Betts coming out of the backfield. Not a whole lot going on downfield for the for the uh, Iowa offense. Need to be able to throw the ball down the field or having to throw to the check down. The Cyclones are doing a good job coming up playing defense. Chris Oliver now to the near side. Split. A little hill to the right. Oliver in motion. Betts straight ahead running. Big hole. First down and then some. Over the 25, up to the 27-yard line. Betts just kept the feet moving. He was carrying A.T. Boston. Well, give it to the guy who's brung you all season, Liddell Betts. Going to be the ISO play, lead play inside. Watch the offensive line clean up, and then you got your big fullback, Jeremy Allen, seal the linebacker. Allows Betts to get back into the secondary. He can run through those safety tackles. Take a look there, 47 on your left side of your screen. Jeremy Allen with a nice block. Liddell Betts got a lot of power to tell that spot. It's a first down and 10. Excellent run by Betts from the 27. McCann looks in the flat, nothing doing. Running to Hill. Great catch at the 40. Down to the 37-yard line, Khalil Hill. A tremendous reception, his fifth of the day. Well, there's three things that happen on this. First, you've got protection of the offensive line. Kyle McCann's going to do the punt with just a drop back pass. Look at the offensive line protection. His vision, he throws the ball. That's number two. And number three is a great catch. Khalil Hill outstretches his arms, gets behind the defense. Harold Lewis cannot make the play. He's in good coverage, but the ball is thrown outside and deep. And Hill outstretches his arms and makes a great grab. Now you second guess yourself on fourth and a foot. First and 10 from the 38. The Iowa State defense is bent, but they haven't broken yet today. And Matt Ward leads the charge of the red jerseys. Adam Runk putting his head in there, too. Not much going on for Liddell Betts, who continues just to drive. You know, you, you just have to be impressed with Betts. Well, he is. He's a good tailback, a guy you want to build around. And, hey, Kurt Ferentz must have gone in at halftime and said, hey, we're going to come back with our normal game plan, mm -hmm. run the football, throw the ball with McCann, just get back to playing sound Iowa Hawkeye football. And that's what they've done in this opening drive for. Well, Betts comes out. Jeremy Allen is in. Second down and seven. McCann has a man streaking down the middle of the field. Let's it fly in the end zone. Incomplete. Knocked away by Mark Timmons. Solid throw, though, by McCann. Intended for Chris Oliver, but Timmons, the sophomore from Bradenton, Florida, is a heady player. Well, it's a big play action fake. You watch the heavy fake, and Timmons is going to get back deep. He's going to get a little healthier because if McCann throws that ball early, Oliver is behind him. Timmons, the safety. 
good play and reaction getting back underneath the throw and able to break it up. Just an all-around good play by Timmons. Third down and seven now for the Hawkeyes. Oliver wide to the right. McCann looking for Oliver, throwing, passes complete, down to the 25-yard line, and that'll be a first down. A.T. Boston on the coverage. Oliver ran a solid pattern. No happy feet for that quarterback. No. Kyle McCann does a nice job of stepping into this throw. Chris Oliver on the outside, little button hook route, get him in front of the cornerback and work back to your quarterback and gets enough of the first down. That's the most important thing. Kyle McCann can throw the football, oh, yeah. throws it well deep, can zip it in there. He's their passing quarterback, a senior leads his offense, and he's doing a good job here in the third quarter. Well, he completes 65%. That's pretty solid no matter what level you're playing. First and 10 from the 25 for Iowa. Best. Straight ahead running is stood up, but he still leans forward down to the 21-yard line. Still picks up four. Adam Rook from that strong safety spot again on the tackle. Well, the Cyclone defense has to find a way to stop Matt Ward, who had a good, good first half, goes into the offensive line, and they handle him there on the pressure. Jeremy Allen leads the play for Betts. This offense is clicking now for the Hawkeyes. Lyle Liddell Betts comes back out. Oh, you made a great point. Kurt Ferris just said, we're going back to our game plan. What got us here? What has had us average over 35 points a game. And now Khalil Hill wide to the right. Second and six. They give it to Allen. Right side. First down, Iowa. Inside the 15 down to about the 14-yard line. Word and Runk making the stop. That's a pretty good one-two punch when you think of Betts and Allen. Yeah, it is. Those two guys, they get the ball and and Allen, tell you, he's done a good job running the football when he's had opportunity to do it this year. They actually throw the ball to him a little bit, too. Mm -hmm. 17 catches on the year. You see his numbers running this season. He's a big bruising fullback. He's done a good job blocking so far, getting up on those linebackers of the Cyclones. Iowa has been as good as their offensive line, and now's the time that this offensive line of the Hawkeyes has to dig in. First and 10 from the 14. A very impressive drive by Iowa. McCann looking. Throwing, great call to Betts. Touchdown! Well, this is one, I tell you, this is a great play design here. Ken yeah, O'Keefe, right. the offensive coordinator, is just going to run the play action fake they've run time and time again. But, hey, take your tailback, fake it to him, and then sneak him out the back door for a screen to him. Well set up. He's got the lineman up front blocking. Everybody's there. It's a clean run to the end zone for Betts. Hey, I tell you, that's a play that I'm most impressed with running with real efficiency from the offense. Liddell Betts' first receiving touchdown this year. Now the extra point by Nick Cady. The important extra point. Snap down, the kick. Splits the uprights, and he is 47 to 48. Well, Liddell Betts from Kyle McCann and Iowa is right back into this football game, trailing by just seven. Liddell Betts pulls Iowa within seven at 14 to seven. Talk about how close this game is. Iowa with 200 total yards. Iowa State with 196. But the 308 drive, three minute and eight second drive by Iowa ended up with Liddell Betts' touchdown. But as we were talking during the break, Gary, that was impressive. It really was. The way they moved the ball down the field, offense was clicking for the Hawkeyes. Hey, Kirk Ferentz has done a good job. Whatever he told him at halftime, it worked. Yeah. Well, Katie set to kick it away. Phillips and Wagner for Iowa State. Once again, he's kicking in with a very strong win. High sidewinding kick. Goodbye. A touchdown once again. We're really impressive. It's a play action here, fake inside. They do this all the time. All the receivers run down, and what they do is they leave a void area over here, and then Liddell Betts gets in behind his offensive lineman, and hey, bingo, it's all the way to the house because the corner runs off, the safety's back in coverage. That's a play that they knew that no one was going to cover the check down receiver, which is Betts on that play. The defense basically lets him go, and they cover everyone else. Well, the Iowa State coaches have a bag of tricks. They always have that reverse threat in their bag. Joe so Woodley, the fullback, and it's Haywood, the tailback. Haywood skips up ahead for probably three yards on the play. 
One thing that Iowa State wanted to do offensively is keep Iowa moving on defense. Explain, Gary. What they want to do is keep the defensive linemen moving, make them make tackles at the sidelines. We really haven't seen that today. That's right. Surprised that they haven't stretched the field more. They felt like that the defensive linemen that Iowa has are instead of two defensive ends, maybe playing with two defensive tackles. You can talk about Campman with his ability. Number 54, the big defensive lineman on the outside who plays defensive end. We don't feel like he runs extremely well. And he's probably suited more as a defensive tackle. Whitmer wide to the left on second and seven. Now Stunica Wallace changing it. He's going to have to burn the timeout. We told you he brings two plays to the line of scrimmage, and neither one of those must not have been any good. We have a timeout. 8-17 left in the third. Seven points separates the two. But along with Gary Reasons, I'm Ron Thulin. 8-17 left in the third. Iowa State leading 14-7. Iowa has, you can just feel the confidence here in the second half. Wallace swings it out into the flat. Montgomery, not much running room after the reception. Benny Sapp, the very talented sophomore out of Fort Lauderdale, Florida, coming up uh, from that quarterback spot. Good job, Benny Sapp on yep. the outside. Just taking on the blocker and going to be a little slip screen behind him, but Benny Sapp comes off the block and makes a play for no game. Now, if you're Dan McCartney, you're thinking, let's just get to the fourth quarter. Dan. Exactly. You want to get to the fourth quarter. You get the wind at your back. You need a couple of first downs, though, because if you kick and have to punt into the wind, the Hawkeyes are going to have a chance to do the football again. That's still 8-11 to play here in the third. Third and four now for the Cyclones. Wallace looks for the quick pass, and he is going to be dumped back at the 25-yard line right at the line of scrimmage i think he looked right and he was looking for a goal pattern on the left but excellent defense by this iowa defense well everything was covered and covered and seneca wallace looks to his right looks back to his left steps inside and then big cole and cole number 94 says no way big guy i'm going to take you down make the big play for the hawkeyes now you have to be concerned is kicking into the wind will be tony yelp they've been averaging over 45 yards a kick Returnable. Jones. Oh, what a play! DeAndre Phillips out of Mission Hills, California, was being blocked, still able to separate and make the play. Gary? Well, C.J. Jones is back there instead of Khalil Hill at the punt returning position. That's he's a kick some. returner as well also, but he, so he's able to do this. But that's a great play oh, by the Cyclones nice. covering Phillips. does a nice job getting in position, breaking down, and making the tackle. Where do you buy those things? That guy's got on his head. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> I think it's a reject from Wisconsin, isn't it? It might be. It's a half it doesn't have any holes in it. No, it doesn't. Well, he's got one. <laughs> Set first and ten from their own 34-yard line. Interesting. A little hill not returning punts. McCann, straight drop, plenty of time, rifles the pass, caught. 45-yard line by the tight end, Dallas Clark. Boy, he had some zip on that ball. Well, Dallas Clark is a tight end. He catches a lot of footballs. He's a second leading receiver here. He's going to come up and run the post pattern, get in behind the defense, and watch the ball thrown in by McCann. Threads it right in there very, very nicely. That should be that. And Runk, the strong safety on the play. Good execution to the tight end. Runk, a third team, all Big 12 member. And you can see how close it is just looking at the yardage. First and 10 from the 46. Now Hill on the near side. And C.J. Jones. McCann will put it up again. Scrambling, here come the jerseys. And he is going to be dropping, not before he picks up a couple. Good job by McCann keeping his feet underneath him as Tyson Smith and Jeremy Lloyd converge quickly. Well, he got a lot of, lot of help there up front trying to keep him out. Nobody gets to him. McCann, just watch his feet there. You see, it take, look, look at what happens with the tight end going down and trying to get open. Get drunk on it in coverage again. He says, I want the ball, I want the ball, but not going to get it to him. Oh, oh, he got away with a little bit. Got away with a little bit. Little, little. Love me tap in the back. Pick up a two, second and eight. Big series if you're the Iowa State defense because this Iowa offense has been impressive in the second half. That's right side again. Another little bit of running room. Tyson Smith trying to drag him down from behind. That's closing in on 100 yards rushing. Well, they just stretched the offensive line out that time and got hat on hat on the defense. Made a couple of holes there for Bet to choose to go through. He goes behind the right guard. 
Nice game. The time brings up third and short. Now, if you're going to the game, why bring a television? I'm just kind of curious. <laughs> they're going to listen to you, Ron. You've got right. headphones That's on right. the whole bit. <laughs> ah. Yeah, I bet. Third down and two for Iowa. Ball on the Iowa State 46-yard line. Option, McCann. First down, Iowa. Adam Runkroot was hanging on for dear life, but McCann just powered his way up a couple yards. Well, John Spodany, the defensive coordinator from Iowa State, probably wouldn't think that this quarterback, Kyle McCann, is going to run the option. He's done that a little bit this year. He's done a very good job. He's been very efficient running it. The thing about him making a good decision, which he does there, to hold the ball, just get them enough for the first down, which is about a yard. In the second half, it has been the Iowa offense. That has been the key. They keep it on the ground. Betts, one man to beat. Touchdown, Iowa. What a great move by Liddell Betts. His 10th time he's got into the end zone running the football this year. Showed some... Uh, well, watch your fullback, number 47, Jeremy Allen, get the lead block here in spring. Bet, Bet cut back inside. He good. falls off the linebacker, and Bet takes it to the house. He has enough speed. And good job there, eluding the tackle on the out on the on the sideline, and Bet puts another one up for the Hawkeyes. And the extra point for the tie. Good snap, and we are tied. Liddell Betts ties this ball game up. Phillips and Wagner back, and again, the kick out of the end zone. So in two possessions in the second half, Iowa has made good. Betts has been the man. I talked about Jeremy Allen, the fullback, getting the block, but watch the center, number 72, Bruce Nelson, come around and get word, the middle linebacker. Actually, he's holding right up there at the top. <laughs> he gets him out of the picture, and Liddell Betts takes it to the house. He does the rest for the Hawkeyes. Two good blocks on that play, one by the center, Bruce Nelson, and, the, and your, your fullback, Jeremy Allen, Good job that time and put points on the board. 66 yards only took him five plays and just over 140. Five of ten opponents this year have failed to score or scored just once in the second half on this Iowa defense. Wallace rolling left, rolling into the flat. Jack Whitmer with the reception. Whitmer with his second catch of the afternoon and bets again. Over 1,000 yards run of the football. 1,090 last year, 1,040 this year. Three straight years, over 800 yards rushing. Only the second runner in Iowa history to do that. Well, he's doing a good job for the Hawkeyes. I'm telling you, one of the football. But offensively for Iowa State, Seneca Wallace now is 13 of 14 completing passes, 143 yards on the day. And he let him throw the ball some more. Into the wind. And second and five, he's got some running room, throws it instead. What a catch! Up to the 37-yard line, Mike Banks turned completely around to make that reception. And Banks has five catches on the afternoon. He's had a nice afternoon from the tight end spot, blocking as well. He's going to come across here on the back side and get open. Seneca Wallace on the roll out there. Watch him throw across his body. Good job by the tight end, settling down. Hey, acrobatic catch. Wow. Good job by the senior. Okay, so I said he didn't have great hands. He had good hands. I think I just elevated that a tad. Well, he had 27 catches a year ago. His production's been down this year, Ron. Hey, he's a, he's a tight end. He can catch a football, and it's a good blocker as well. Of course, uh, Seneca Wallace had 18 straight completions earlier this year, which is a Big 12 record. Now he rolls right, looking, plenty of time, throwing, complete up to the 48-yard line. Lane Danielson again with a catch, his fifth of the afternoon. The sophomore from Dyke, Iowa. And the first time we see Seneca Wallace roll to the right, throws well to the left. Hey, go ahead and roll to the right, see if you can stick it in there as well. He sure does. He makes his 15th or 16th completion of the day as he sticks it in there. Hey, the Cyclones have responded. Hawkeyes have put up two touchdowns yeah. here. Now on this drive, they're answering back. Still plenty of time in the third, just over four minutes. They've done it on the passing of Seneca Wallace. And as Haywood looks for some daylight, crosses the 50 into Iowa territory, down to about the 47-yard line. 
pickup of about six on the play, which will set up a second down and four. Well, when you're going to roll your quarterback like they do with Seneca Wallace, it's going to open it up for Ennis Haywood eventually inside. He does a good job that time of reading the offensive lineman's blocks. Takes a little skip step, skip step to his left. It's tough for me to say, but six yards <laughs> on the run, and uh, this offense is starting to click here for the Cyclones. Haywood, one of the guys that wasn't heavily recruited out of Carter High School in Dallas, has really matured in his four years at Iowa State. Second and four. From the shotgun, Wallace throwing pass incomplete. Intended for Jamal Montgomery. Fans wanted a uh, penalty flag, but Bob Sanders just lowered the boom on him. That was just solid defense. Well, Bob Sanders is the biggest hitter in that secondary, probably the biggest hitter on their defense. The defensive coordinator told me, say, hey, if there was a way to measure his explosiveness, bingo. Bob Sanders will go off the charts. Good job at time breaking up from the safety spot. Yeah. Tough angle to see. Looks like you got that left-handed to swat away the ball. Third down and four. Big third down now for Iowa State. Iowa, six on the line of scrimmage. They bring four. Wallace looking deep. Penalty flag thrown. Has a man wide open and complete. Lane Danielson had a step, but it would have gone for naught. Two penalty flags holding against Iowa State. Well, this is a tough call to make here. What do you do on this? You're going to give the offense an opportunity to throw the ball again. Yeah. You see Seneca Wallace throw it down. He's throwing directly into the wind, throws a nice tight spiral. It actually sails on him a little bit. Well, he wanted that one. Yeah, you have to decline that penalty. That brings up a fourth and four. Now, if you're Dan McCartney, you got to kick it away. No doubt. You're going to have a chance here with punting in the plus territory to get some field position going against the wind, which is kind of unique. And all they want to have happen, Dan, uh, excuse me, Ron, is a chance to get back in the fourth quarter. Three minutes to go here in this uh, second, in this third quarter. Well, Tony Yelp back, standing on his own 41-yard line. C.J. Jones of Iowa on his own 10. So, Khalil Hill, second punt in a row, not returning it. Good one into the wind. Jones looked like a fair catch. Hits. Great punt by the freshman Tony Yelk, the best in the country. And we have a penalty flag thrown. It'll be holding their calling against, I think, Iowa. It looks like a holding call against the Hawkeyes. Yeah, it depends on whether it's post-possession. Yeah, it is against Iowa. Oftentimes, if it's pre-possession before the kick, they can get a first down on that, but I'm not sure if it's going to be post-possession or not. What a great kick, though. I mean, that into, the, into a 20 to 30 mile an hour win, and you down it down at the two-yard line. Well, when you take your punter, Yelk, and let him punt the football. Only on the team, the distance to the goal, first down. Yeah, you get a little bit more yards. Say, when you take your punter, you let him kick the ball into the wind. They say, go ahead and punt it straight up there. Punt it up with all you've got, and Yelk does a nice job. Good job on the drop, good spot. Hey, he likes it. He's going to watch it bounce down there. It's plus 40, plus 40 yards into the wind. Now Iowa with 308 going with the wind. Left in the third, their backs against the wall. They've only lost six fumbles this year. Two tight ends, Clark and Jensen. The little hill to the near side, Betts in the backfield. Betts straight ahead. Powers his way over the five to the six yard line and Runk is there. And you don't know how big a five yard that is. Kirk oh, yeah. is over there saying, hey, we need to get out of this area down to the one yard line. But El Beck just powers it through. Watch him here come through the defensive line. Just find any hole you can and get through there. A little sidestep back to the left. And good job of getting out and gaining five, six yards. And the Iowa State defense, their goal every game, three turnovers and one score. They're in a position now that one of those would be huge. On second and five, nothing doing this time. Anthony Forrest, a redshirt freshman out of Fort Worth, Texas, coming over the top. Matt Ward also in on this tackle. Well, if you're going to run the ISO play, you've got to have your fullback block. Jeremy Allen, number 47, the fullback led up in there. And he didn't want to have any part of contact because the Cyclone defense is yep. coming in there. Hey, Liddell Betts had to stop in his tracks and basically fell down on the play. Third down and six for Iowa. Tied at 14, two minutes to play in the third, and you can see what Iowa's done. On third downs today. Hill wide to the left. 
McCann looking for Hill. Got him. Knocked away. Johnny Smith the third, the sophomore out of Bradenton, Florida. Hill had the move. The pass was there. And the youngster comes up with the best defensive play of the day for the Cyclones. Exactly right. A lot of young players in the secondary in the cornerback spot. Johnny Smith comes up big here on Khalil Hill, the number one receiver for Iowa, coming out and making a nice play, coming around with his left hand and knocking the ball out of there. Well, you need a big defensive play, and that's what happened. Bradley in his end zone. Not much of a rush. With the win, Wagner right at the 50. To the 40. He's got room to the 35, to the 30-yard line of Iowa, Michael Wagner. David Bradley, the kicker, had to make the stop, but not before Wagner brings it all the way down to the 31-yard line, a 29-yard return. Well, Bradley, to his credit, gets a good punt out of there. It's just kind of a line drive effort, though. And the effort here by the return team, hey, excellent. Good job of blocking. Watch the wall set up here from the right side. A little bingo block there. Get a couple more, get him around to the corner. And Bradley, hey, you got to do what you got to do, young man. Make a tackle sometimes. And, yeah. Hey, you never know when you're going to run down and have to do something. These punters, hey, he's got a full face mask on, full shoulder pads. Let he qualifies. Play. He can play. Well, that's the longest punt return of the year for Iowa State. Now Haywood and Jermaine Billups in the backfield. Once again, the shotgun for Wallace. Iowa State must take advantage of this. Wallace into the flat. Dangerous pass, complete pot inside the 20 to Craig Campbell. What a dangerous pass. That was so close to being picked off. Well, they're throwing against quarter defense. What that is, there's four defenders deep. All the way around the back defense here surrounded them. DJ Johnson, number five, is going to try to make a play on the ball, but he doesn't make the play. Campbell's able to come up with with a big play for the Cyclones. Hey, okay, Seneca Wallace has to zip this ball into oh, the, the outside. Hey, okay, that's a tough throw today. Got to feel comfortable with your offense when you're throwing the ball like this into this gusting wind. Two wide receivers to the left, one to the right. Haywood, straight ahead, running room inside the 10, down to the nine yard line. In case you just joined us, it was 14 nothing at halftime. Iowa came out, two scores here in the third. Bets on the reception, bets on the run, tied it at 14, and now Iowa State answering the challenge. Hats off to the Cyclones, and it's because that offensive line is stepping up during this drive. Well, Ennis Haywood is shaking his head as he goes back to the huddle. He knows that he gets his feet picked up there. He's going to take that one in for the score. Well, they're calling it on the 11th, so it's second and four. Haywood. Going to be stacked up right at the 10-yard line, maybe picked up a yard. This is where it gets tough. This Iowa defense has really stepped up this year, considering how far they've come in just the three short years that Kirk Ferris has been the head coach of this team. Such great improvement on defense, only allowing 320 yards a game. And that's the end of the quarter. 15 minutes are left in Ames, Iowa. The Hawkeyes, two touchdowns in the third, tied it up. But as we head to the fourth, Iowa. And they're going to do that here if they put points on the board, Ron. Well, Iowa State definitely has to take advantage of the situation. The penalty will be against Iowa State. shoot yourself in the foot so many times you don't have any toes left but when you're knocking on the door like this in this red zone or green zone the way some coaches call it you can't afford to have penalties like this well they set you back it's obviously going to be a more difficult situation for the offense to, to go with Dan McCarney just shouting out there Kirk Ferentz both coaches really in this game it's tied up 14 to 14 15 minutes of football left this is what it all comes down to right 50,000 people on hand third and eight Wallace three-step drop, rifles a pass incomplete. Into the hands of Jack Whitworth, thought he had it. It would have been a first down, and now Dan McCartney faces fourth down and eight from the 15. Now Wallace dipped it in there like he's supposed to. Then he sap had the coverage on him. Take a look here, he's gonna throw it to us. Doesn't have to overkick this ball. Should have plenty of leg to get this in there. Longest is 47. Remember, they've been slipping. The holder is Casey Baldwin. 
Good snap, good hold, the kick on its way, and it is good. The freshman, Tony, yelled just enough. Out of Arlington, Wisconsin, the best freshman kicker in the country, and he has given Iowa State the lead, but is that a victory for the Iowa defense? Look at that. This is what you got, end of the year, a couple of guys that are teams that are trying to make their bowl opportunity shine a little bit brighter at the end of the year, get that seventh victory. Will and Oliver back, the line drive kick, that'll be going out of the end zone, and Iowa take over first and 10 for their own 20. They'll be going into this breeze, which is still blowing about 20 to 30 miles an hour. Well, that's key here now. Kyle McCann is gonna have to operate with the wind in his face and go out there and march his troops down the field. They've done a good job changing up here, though, in the third quarter. Now coming into the fourth, Fidel Betts has run the ball extremely well. Mm -hmm. Cal McCandle's going to... Well, they've shown just how two-dimensional this team is. They have done it on the ground and in the air. Hill and Jones, the wide receivers, they keep it on the ground. Betts picks up two. Tyson Smith, the former linebacker, and we have a penalty flag thrown, comes up with a stop. It looks like it's going to be against Iowa, and it will. Now the Iowa players are talking about Iowa oh, State. Oh, no. Got a personal foul here. Probably going to be a dead ball foul at the end of the play. Attack on some more yardage. Well, they're talking to Kevin Durande. Dead ball, personal foul. 15 yard penalty. First foul. Oh, my. Well, you have the penalty when you have uh, first and uh, third and four. For Iowa State, offensively, knocking on the door, pushes him back. Now they have this penalty. Not the big, big penalty. Gives them field position. Going into the wind. Don't even have to throw the ball. Maybe starting to rain as well. Yeah, it's, it's starting to sprinkle again. Make it even harder. But Iowa, good field position now at the 32-yard line. 37-yard line. Check that. Bet. Left side. Hit from behind, but makes his way up to the 40. Jordan Parsons coming up along with Matt Ward again. And the defensive linemen do a good job of stringing it out there, let the cavalry come. Both linebackers slide Ward. and make a good play. Jordan Carson's doing a good job holding his own up front. This Hawkeye offense wants to run the ball, but I really think that Kyle McCann, he's had, he's had an excellent day so far, Ron. 10 of 13, mm -hmm. excuse me, 13 of 18, doing a good job, excuse me, 10 of 13. 10 completions, 13 attempts, he's throwing the ball well. Now Betts is out, Jeremy Allen is back in, and here comes the rain again. And it's starting to come down. McCann, five-step drop, looks, pass, caught complete into Iowa State territory. Eric Jensen, the sophomore out of Appleton, Wisconsin, Matt Ward was hanging on him. And Jensen only his third reception of the year. Well, he splits time with Dallas Park at that tight end spot, does a nice job there of working away from the coverage. Show that he's got good hands as well. You've got two tight ends lined up there, and you're going to see him break out away from Ward, the middle linebacker. Ward's got to learn to step in front of that. He could intercept that ball with the proper break. McCann zips it in there. Just a poor angle by the linebacker and a good grab by the big tight end. The little Hill and Jones, the wide receivers, first and 10 for the Iowa State 48. Betts slipping around, still gets his feet underneath him. Crosses the, the 45 down to the 42-yard line. Kevin Durande on the stop. Betts is so hard to tackle. He doesn't need a whole lot of room, Gary. Well, he doesn't need a whole lot of room. That offensive line is doing a good job for him. Bruce Nelson, the center, has anchored this offensive line all year. He's actually done it for the last mm -hmm. three years here for Iowa. He's Started. been a little more, been the most steady guy up there. And when he goes well on the rest of the two offensive tackles, David Porter and Robert Gallery, when they play real well, this offensive line can, can get some holes in that tailback. Nelson well, started as a redshirt freshman. Betts again. This time he is stacked up. Maybe got a yard on the play. Let's go back to Bruce Nelson. Here's a young man that walked onto the program. Now he's made 33 consecutive starts, and he's just a junior. They'll have him back next year. He is a true success story here on this Iowa offensive line. Yeah, you told me. The former tight end, he came to the program and thinking he's going to be a tight end. Kirk Ferris, who's an offensive line coach in the National Football League, said, hey, good man, I need you to play center for us. He's answered the call. Early in the fourth quarter, this will be the play of the fourth quarter. Third and three. Allen, the lone setback. McCann looks for the slant, and he is hit. 
Anthony Forrest, the red shirt freshman. Third sack of the ball game for this Iowa State defense. They'll put a little pressure on the quarterback, pick out a spot where you're going to run. I tell you, look here, Forrest is clean on the outside. McCann does not even see him come. Good clean tackle, good hit, good defensive design. He's looking to his left side all the way, doesn't even see him coming from the backside. Okay, that's a big play for the Cyclones, and it brings up a big fourth down. Now Bradley had problems kicking into the win of the first. Low snap, nice job. This is a better kick. Wagner, fair catch. Right at the 17, 18-yard line. You know, you want your defense to come up with big plays. Iowa looked like they were on the move, but watch this hit. State with the football in the advantage, and Wallace is going to be dropped. No! Still on his feet, and then they're going to say he is down. All the way back to the seven-yard line. That is the second sack of the afternoon for Iowa. Jerry Montgomery, his second sack of the year. Well, Tim DeBrink comes inside, number 91. He's going to get the feet of Seneca Wallace. Just beats everybody up front. Nobody can handle him. You see the knee go down there on the ground, so he is down. Good call by the official. Well, Aaron Campbell was going to put the hurt on him anyway, and the ponchos have been brought out here in Ames because... The rain, not as bad as we had at about 9.30 Central Time this morning, but it is coming down and it is cold. Loss of 10 on the play, second and 20. Haywood, right side, look out. Oh, he was one step away, but he did get over the 10 up to about the 13-yard line, which will bring up the third down and probably about 15. Now, this is a big third down here for the Cyclone, coming out of your own end zone. You need to get a couple of first downs here. Dan McCarney wants his offense to stay on the field. You can actually win the football game with a long drive here. Eat up some time on the clock, and if you can put points on the board, give yourself a little bit of a cushion. Third and 15 from the 13. Three wide receivers to the left. One to the right. Seneca Wallace has been excellent this afternoon. Wallace looking, time, throwing, intercepted at the 32-yard line. Fumble, and Iowa State gets it back. Grant Steen with a pickup. He fumbles it, but I think Iowa State may as well. Seneca Wallace is throwing in the zone coverage here, trying to make a play here, and throws it inside. Grant Steen steps in there, makes, makes a nice grab, but watch Campbell here come to the backside, Campbell. strip it out nicely, and the Hawkeyes... Give it up and get it back to the Cyclones. We're going to have a first down now with room to work on the 17-yard line. Campbell did a great job just tomahawking that ball and then Dennis Haywood there to recover it. And like you said, Gary, what changes it, better field position and the first down. Nothing doing on the ground. Haywood's going to be stacked up. Well, Campbell actually, after making that tackle, came out of the game. He's on the sideline now on the... The far side of the field, we see him running, trying to stretch out. Campbell's had a big day today, four or five grabs for the Cyclone offense, but probably no bigger play than that one right there, stripping mm -hmm. the ball out and getting the ball back to your offense. You know, that's the first, I think, forced play we've seen by Seneca Wallace today. Would that be a pretty fair statement? That that's was a first forced play. It's a good analogy. He's able to, to move around, and when he has open space, he throws the ball real well. Take a look at Campbell with a strip out there, and he falls down on his leg, and hopefully he'll be back in the game for the Cyclone. Now second and nine, clock inside of nine minutes. Iowa State with the lead in the football. Option, Wallace. Tripped up at the 20, nice defensive play by Steen. Well, Grant Steen got Seneca Wallace last time on the interception. Now he gets him with his feet and a good tackle on the sideline. Look at Grant the guns Steen's on him. Yeah, look at the guns on him, though. Wow, yeah, he's Bill Wallace, 6'3", 238 pounds, or just a sophomore. Emmitsburg, Iowa. 50 tackles coming into this game. He's going to go out. Well, Norm Parker, the defense quarter from Iowa, is like, i got a lot of young guys out there, but they're more effort guys. They play well together, so they have to do that to be successful defensively. Sun trying to peek out on third and seven. Four wide receivers set for Iowa State. Iowa's showing a blitz. They bring five. Now they back off. Wallace pass. Caught 32-yard line. First down, Iowa State. Craig Campbell. Oh, this young man does it all. 
Well, you ring his bell, and Craig Campbell, he sure answers it. That's for sure. Makes a play, brings it back to his offense now when you need a big third down reception for a first down. Seneca Wallace delivers, but watch the catch and the concentration. Has enough separation from Sapp, gets in front of him, brings down a nice grab. Fifth reception for Campbell on the day. I tell you, the ball is wet. He still makes that catch. Well, I tell you, look like he's juggling with his yeah. fingertips there. Almost is going to get away from him, but did a nice job of bringing it in and securing the catch. Now the rain has stopped. Still cloudy and windy. 7.40 to play. First and 10 from the 32. Fumble. Recovered. Well, Iowa State dodging a little bit of a bullet. Only their 13th fumble this year, but they've only lost, as we mentioned, two. Well, that's just a snap that got up over Wallace's head and would have had to go up high to get it. And Luckily got it back. That's almost like a penalty or a situation where you lost it down and lose five on the play. Three wide receivers to the right. Lane Danielson, the lone wide receiver to the left. Wallace looking, time into the flat, complete to Danielson. To the 40, inside the 40, skips his way out at the 43 yard line. And that'll be good enough for another first down. Bob Sanders chasing him out. Well, this is a good job by your quarterback. Looking down the field, you know you've got to get 18 yards for the first down. But, hey, take what the defense gives you. Lane Danderson is going to be on the bottom of the screen. He's going to run a smash route all the way across. Watch the progression of the quarterback. He's going to watch all these guys run off. The void area is back here. Danderson makes the grabbing behind the defense. More importantly, a first down and a lot of breathing room now for the Cyclones. Well, Steve Loney said that smash route is their favorite route to run. It was there, first and 10 from the 43. It's bowl time for both of these teams. Block the ally of Iowa State, Seneca Wallace looking, throwing across his body, pass is complete, and Iowa inside Iowa's territory. Jack Whitmer again, his third reception of the year. Seneca Wallace, I tell you, he's really impressing me today. He's coming rolling to his left. He may throw the ball, go, throw the ball better rolling to his left. Yeah. He has three receivers out to hit in front of him, but he throws it behind him to Whitford coming across from the backside. Little boy, the defensive areas. And hey, Seneca Wallace is having an excellent day. He's now completed 19 of 24 passes on the day with, with 218 yards. Well, he was 22 of 24 at Baylor for over 250 yards. He is just having a remarkable day today. More importantly, the clock is running inside of six minutes. Haywood stacked up, nothing doing. Will lose three yards on the play, back to the 50. Fred Barr, nice job from that linebacker spot. It really was. Fred, Lott, Fred Barr, we haven't talked a lot about him today, but he's the leading tackler on that Hawkeye defense. Doing a good job of slipping in there and making a negative play when you need it. Brings up a third and short situation, so the Hawkeyes have a chance here to, to stop yeah. the Cyclones, but they're going to have to enter here on third down. Whitford comes out, the wide receiver for Iowa State. Both teams making changes. Third and three. Whitford in motion. Wallace over the middle, has a man, and it is complete to Whitford. Threw it behind him, he slipped, he fell, and he still made the catch. His fourth of the afternoon. Well, when you're going to throw the football down in the middle of the field and give your quarterback a chance to do it, you've got to block everybody. Hey, Aaron Cantman, number 54. Marcel has done a good job. Marcel Howard, number 75. McCartney not getting, and Steve Loney not getting conservative at all. Straight ahead running. Inside the 35, down to the 33-yard line. Tough yards. Boy, how important, though, is it, Gary, to get that six, five, six yards on first down? Well, that helps your offense coordinator, Steve Loney, let him make calls, a lot easier calls, something that you don't have to make a lot of decisions on. Hey, I, this is go with what works. That offensive line doing a good job to stretch it out. It's a big tailback in his Haywood, let him find the crease. And, Enough power, and he showed why he is, mm -hmm. you know, first team Big 12 selection this year. Excellent tailback. 73 yards running the foot.